Hello everyone, Mr. K here again. Talk about Ohm's law and circuits today. If you're watching this for AutoTech, this is number one, a state standard that the uh, state of Indiana says we're required to teach you guys, talk about in here. Number two, the local Ivy Tech department head of automotive technology has said several times to me that this is the most important and also the most difficult lesson you guys will learn this entire year. So very important that you listen up, very important that you follow along. Um, remember, you can pause this video, you can rewind it. If there's something you don't get or will go too fast, um, contact me, I can help you. If you're, if you're at home doing e-learning or just uh, keep in mind, you can replay it as many times as you need. So first of all, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play this video here because it's gonna play into later on in the presentation. Do a little drag and drop. Okay. Okay, so what you saw there was a big, big time, that's a big boy battery, right? That's a car battery or a truck battery. And they hooked it up to a wire, just created a direct short. If you don't know what that is, that's okay. Hooked it up to a wire. And remember, there's a lot of energy in these big batteries, like a car automotive battery, a lot more than a nine volt or a triple A or double A. And all that energy wants to go from one terminal to the other. It's trying to jump uh, negative to positive, positive to negative, depending on which electron theory you buy into. Um, we, you know, you could you can argue about that in physics class. That's not what we're here for, though. Uh, but anyway, the, the point is, their electrons are trying to go from one terminal to the other on the battery. Opposite polarities, <clears throat> positive and negative. And when you connect a wire to them, that allows that path to travel. And when you have a battery this big, this guy's trying to, let's say positive to negative, this guy is trying to shove all that energy he has through this little wire to over here. And with how much energy is in this battery, it's just too much and that wire can't take it. So it overheats, turns red hot, turns orange hot, uh, burns up until the wire just fragments, falls apart, and then you lose the connection again. Okay, so that's what happened in that video. Why'd the wire burn? We just talked about that. Okay. You guys remember looking at these on Shop Key Pro or in, in a paper manual in class? Some of you might be saying, you know, why do we need to talk about electricity? Why are we talking about circuits, that type of thing? Because this is the diagram of a uh, typical automobile. Oh, wait, if you think this is complicated, this is a 1975 automobile, okay? That means pretty much just about everything you work on is gonna be a lot more complicated than this. So again, if this looks overwhelming to you, then you need to pay attention and listen up. Uh, if you think this is crazy and oh, we're never gonna have a use for this type of stuff. Uh, again, this is a 1975 automobile. And if you want to learn to fix a 2020 automobile or even a 2010 or a 2000 or even a 95, it's going to be way more complicated than this. So definitely need to pay attention here if you want to be able to interpret this type of thing. <clears throat> Electrical, plus on new cars, everything's run by electricity. Um, new cars, the brake systems have electrical components in them. The ABS sensors, there's ABS pumps, there's... Uh, Let's see, steering systems have it. There's electronic power steering now. Uh, there's elect electricity that runs in your fuel system, right? Runs a fuel pump, fuel tank sending unit. How about a boost pump that's halfway between the fuel pump, the, between the gas tank and the uh, engine? How about interior lights? How about turn signals? How about reverse lights? How about backup? I mean, everything, everything on the car, electricity. And without electricity, you're not gonna go anywhere or do anything, okay? Even if you take the engine and rip it out of a car, and you're stuck there on the side of the road, your engine explodes, you probably still have a battery and you probably can still use your turn signals. You can probably use your hazards. You can probably use your radio. You can probably flash your headlights. Uh, I go, this can go on. Okay, your fuel pump probably still works. Uh, again, electricity drives everything. So this is extremely important. Okay. 
<clears throat> this is your most basic circuit, your, your, your typical circuit. This is, this is about as simple as we can get to show you, um, to start with electricity, I should say that, okay? Start paying attention to these symbols. You're gonna need them, okay? There's a symbol for a battery. These symbols are gonna be almost the same in every diagram you look at, okay? Positive, larger bar, negative, always that short one. Single cell batteries just have two lines, multi-cell or high voltage battery would work. I'll say multi-cell or, or higher voltage. So we're not talking about a one and a half volt double A. We're talking about a car battery, 12 volts. Okay, it's got multiple cells. So if you don't know what a cell is, don't worry about it. Not a big deal right now. Notice this diagram, I believe this diagram is actually out of your book that I, that I use. So um, this diagram, positive to negative. Okay, if you look at a battery, you'll see a plus and a minus sign. That's what that is. That's what that corresponds to, different polarities. Okay, and remember, this guy is always trying to get to this guy, and this guy is always trying to get to this guy. They're trying to connect. And when a battery is just sitting on the table on a workbench, no wires on it, it can't connect. But now we're giving it a path. Okay, positive. Power is flowing through up here through the wire, going down to the lamp. Electrical lamp, okay? Notice they just talk about electric lamp. This could also be a resistor. It could be an electric motor. Uh, it could be a lot of things. It could be a heating element, but it's something that uses power, okay, in, in, the, in the system. So also the load, that's a very generic term. That's the load, whatever it is it's powering. So again, power is going from the positive on the battery up through the wire, going down to the lamp, and it's gonna light this lamp, and then that power is gonna return to the negative, okay? So remember, this, this guy always wants to get to this guy. If you give him a path with the wire, he's going to say, oh, good, I can, I'm on my way to the negative. On my way, on my way, oh, shoot, I got to go through a light bulb first. Well, that's okay. I'll go through the light bulb. Okay, now I'm on my way to the negative, and here you are at the negative. <clears throat> here is a good illustration, good drawing. If you're having trouble understanding the difference between volts, amps, and ohms, and we haven't dug into those terms too much yet, but... Volt, let me, let, me, let me back up one step actually. Amp is what does the work. Amp's doing the work in the electrical system. Amps is the power that's flowing through this wire and it's gonna light the lamp. Light the, light the lamp, that's the amp, okay? Volts is what's pushing that through the wire, <clears throat> okay? So again, pushing that through the wire are the volts, but when it gets to the lamp, the amps are actually doing the work. Ohm is resistance. Ohm is what's trying to slow down this or stop this electricity from flowing. In this, Ohm is actually this guy, the lamp. The lamp actually slows down. Or it's lessening the electrical current uh, that's flowing through here. Okay. So again, power is going volts. Amps is flowing through here and volts is pushing it. Volts is saying, let's go, let's go, let's go. And amps is saying, okay, okay, I'm going, I'm going. When we get there, I'll do the work though. Volts is saying, let's go, let's go. Gets to the lamp. Volt says, all right, I got you here at the lamp. And the amp says, all right, I'm gonna do my job now. I'm gonna do some work, I'm gonna light the lamp. And the lamp is the resistance guy that's saying, slow down, slow down, okay? Here's another one. Volts, this guy on top, he's beating this amp guy. He's trying to get him to go through the pipe, okay? Resistance, Mr. Ohm here. This is, Ohm is how you measure resistance, all right? But it's resistance to flow, resistance to electrical flow. He's slowing it down. <clears throat> if it doesn't make total sense to you, don't worry. I actually like this explanation a little better. Okay, think about it like water. So voltage is all the water that's towering over the pipe and it's, it's pushing down on that water down here. Current is the water itself that does the work. Now, maybe you're gonna go hook this up to a garden hose, water your garden, maybe you're going to fill a tank with it, but Current is the water. The water is going to do the work. Okay, the volts is going to get the water to your garden, get the water to your water tank, but the water does the work. The current is what's doing the work. Resistor, how much are you going to restrict it? Okay, big tank into small hose, that's the resistor, is a small hose. <clears throat> okay, say you uh, take a big gulp of water, but you don't swallow it, and you're going to blow that water out of straw. Okay, your friend's sitting next to you. Or maybe your little sister, that's probably more accurate. Maybe your big sister, that's probably even more accurate. And you're going to you're gonna just blow the water out at her, okay? Because, you know, that's how us little brothers handle things here um, at the dinner table when we're bored. So anyway, you're going to blow the water out at her. 
and take a big gulp of water and you don't swallow it and you put a straw in your mouth, it's the pressure that, that your mouth creates, uh, you're gonna push that water out, that is the voltage, okay? The current is the water that you're gonna blow out and then the resistor is the small straw that you're blowing through. Because we know it's a lot easier to just, just spit the water out through your mouth, right? But if you put a straw in your mouth, you gotta deal with the resistor, resistance. Here's another diagram, okay? Water flowing through a pipe, get my mouse back here. There's the pump, it's gonna pressurize the water, send it down the pipe. Remember the water is the amperage, the voltage is the pump, voltage is pushing it. And here they use sand as the, as the resistor or as the resistance to electrical flow instead. It's gotta work, the pump has to work hard, the voltage has to work hard to push the amperage through the resistance and get it back to return to the other side of the battery. Same thing here, comes off the positive, voltage is pushing. When it gets to here, the current says, okay, I'll do the work now. Keeps pushing back to battery. <clears throat> so you're losing power as you go through this, right? Losing power. Pushes off of here. Amperage is, is uh, going through, voltage is pushing the amperage through here. Hits a resistor, amperage does some work. Back to the battery. So let's recap for a minute. Everything starts with the battery. Remember, everything starts with the battery is probably the most important part of the, the whole car, I would argue, because you can't do, without a battery, you're not gonna do anything, okay? <clears throat> Unless you push start your car, but that's getting into a whole different, uh, whole different thing that, that we're, not, we're not touching on right now. But 99% but of the time, the battery starts at all, okay? So battery comes off the battery, current flows through here, Right, it goes down here, Amp, amps are doing some work, back to the battery. Okay, now if we're gonna talk about wiring diagrams, electricity, how electricity flows, we're gonna to need to know a little bit about symbols <clears throat> that you're going to see. This is a little overwhelming if you haven't looked at electrical symbols before, okay? I can tell you that probably two thirds of these I, I don't have memorized and I don't know that I've ever had the need to have memorized. So I've stepped it down, I've thinned it out for you. These are probably more of the important ones that you're gonna to need to know for this class. I would probably also cross off coaxial plug and antenna uh, now that I think about it. Uh, but a lot of the other stuff's probably pretty, pretty legit here, okay? Uh, battery, I think this shows a single cell battery. Here we go, battery single cell, just two lines, but still that's a battery. Ground, you're gonna need that a lot. Okay, we'll get into more of those as time goes on, but note resistor. Remember, it's something that's resisting electrical flow. <clears throat> also take note when you're looking at these wiring diagrams, wires that cross each other in a diagram are not connected. That just, just means they they go across each other in that diagram. Doesn't mean they lay on top of each other and touch each other in the car. Doesn't mean they're connected electrically. Doesn't mean elect energy passes from one to the other. One may be a wire for a tail light and one may be a wire for the horn. Just, but if you see it in a diagram, that's just their way of, of fitting it all on one page, okay? This means they are connected. That means electricity can flow any of these directions. <clears throat> so let's talk about resistors. Okay, no, there's a resistor in there. We've, we've, we've been starting to talk about them if you're here in class, <clears throat> you know there's, a res there's actually a little resistor on your desk, which is going to look like that guy in the bottom left corner. It's gonna look like one of those. See, they have different colors on them. That's, something that's gonna be important soon, okay? Another form of a resistor, headlights, okay? Those resist electrical flow. You may not think of an electric motor as a resistor, but it, it, it is, there's windings of wire inside of here. And if you hook an ohmmeter up to measure resistance on these two wires, you're gonna get a reading, it's a type of resistor. This is what your resistors look like on the inside. They're a winding of a bunch of wire. <clears throat> if you're here in person, I would, I would hold up, I'd be holding up a wire in class right now that's a foot long and then a roll of wire that's a hundred feet long and they're both the same thickness. I'm gonna say which one is gonna conduct electricity better, the short wire or the 100 foot wire? 
It's just like a garden hose. If you try to, if you've ever tried this, you take a garden hose off, off the connection at your house and you're trying to get the water out of, out of it for the winter and you put your mouth up to it and start blowing, it is very hard to blow water through a 100 foot garden hose. But if you have a section of garden hose a foot long, you can blow the water right out of it. Okay, same thing with electricity. It's gonna be a lot easier for a battery to push electricity through a wire that's one foot long than a wire that's 100 feet long. So what do they do if they wanna create a resistor to tone down the uh, flow of electricity for, for whatever reason? They just put a bunch of windings of wire inside of it. That is one way they're made. There's other ways too, but let's just let's just, just focus on that one for now. Remember those resistors have color bands on them. <clears throat> those color bands correspond to something. Okay, this is for a six band resistor, but let's go to a simpler chart. Oh, I guess I don't have it in this particular presentation. All right, that's all right. <clears throat> let's say a six band resistor, okay? So we're looking at these color bands on those resistors. If you wanna know what the value is of this resistor, how many ohms it is, that means how much, how much it resists electrical flow. We go to the first band, it's red. If we go down on the chart, boom, I found red and the red represents a two, interesting, okay? Purple, what does purple represent? Oh, that's a seven, okay? Yellow, yellow represents a four, okay? You don't add them together as in, you know, two plus two plus two, <clears throat> those, are, those are places in numbers, okay? So this one is just your first digit of your three digit number. So it's gonna be two, seven, four, 274 ohms. So oh, but wait, there's more. <clears throat> Didn't think you're gonna get a cooking commercial in here, did you? <clears throat> but wait, there's more. The black, okay, the next one is the multiplier. It happens to be black. One, this, this is what you multiply your first number by. 274, well, we're just multiplying times one, which 274 times one is 274. So the, the value for this resistor is 274 ohms. That is the value. Now these other things, the tolerance, temperature coefficient, I'm not worried too much about those. You guys don't really need those for this class. Um, and I would argue you, you don't need to know that most of the time either, unless you're building a computer or, or high tech um, equipment, that type of thing. But just for auto tech class, I just need you guys to know how to use these bands, which really is just the first four bands. Okay, or if it's a four band resistor, just four bands <clears throat> to find the value. Okay, now that you've found the value of a resistor, get your ohm meter out and measure that. Okay, if you don't have an ohm meter where you are or with you, um, you probably can't do that right now, but I will step you through what it's gonna look like. If you get out an ohm meter or a multimeter, because it does more than just ohms, you're gonna flip it to this right here, resistance. It's this, uh, I'd call it an infinity, or not infinity symbol, I'm sorry, omega symbol. You're gonna flip to that, okay? Symbol for ohms. And then you hold that across the two leads of your resistor, which would be like right here and right here, you're gonna get a reading. <clears throat> and if you're holding it on this resistor, you would get, it, it should say 274 ohms on your screen. Okay, so go ahead and do that. Just a recap here. By the way, I pause the video if you need more time. Just to recap here, remember volts are pushing, amps are doing the work, resistance is slowing things down. Okay, you are going to see on your multimeter, your ohm meter, some of you have resistors that are in, they're not 274 ohms. Some of you may have a resistor that's up in the thousands. You may have a 10,000 ohm resistor, a 100,000 ohm resistor. Your meter doesn't have enough room on the screen to put all those zeros. So if you have a, let's say you have a one, mil, one million ohm resistor, so that's, that is really resisting electrical flow, right? So remember zero ohms is good. That's, that's just a wire, zero ohms, okay? So this is really resisting electrical flow right here. Okay, a million, a million ohms. So 
your meter may have an M there instead of just uh, instead of putting out a, writing down a million on the screen. It's not going to have enough screen to show that. It's just going to say one M, and you just need to check your symbol and make sure you know that means one million ohms. So you got to watch these symbols very carefully, okay, on your meter. Now, if you're in class, you'll see, you'll have a light bulb on your desk. Measure that light bulb for resistance in the same way. Flip your knob to this this symbol. Measure your light bulb. Okay. Some of your meters might be saying OL. That means out of limits. If your meter reads OL <clears throat> while you're measuring the light bulb and you're sure you have a good connection on the leads, that, what does that mean? It means your light bulb's probably bad. Okay, there's no continuity, there's no, there's no way for electricity to pass through your light bulb at all. Also, don't forget to isolate the circuit. What I mean by that is, if, you, um, if you're measuring resistance, let's go back here, measuring resistance across this resistor, and you're touching your skin on both of these, those probes of the multimeter are going to be measuring the resistance going through your body, not this. So you have to be very careful. You only want these, these wires that's coming off your multimeter, you only want those touching the metal that you're measuring. If you try to touch other metal or you touch it with your skin, it's gonna measure what's in your body, the, the electrical resistance of your body, not the, th not the item you're trying to measure, okay? Now, measure it from one hand to the other. So what this means is just grab the metal part on each of your leads of your ohm meter and hold on to them, okay? Some people in the class are gonna be getting 500, I've seen as low as 300,000 ohms, okay? I've seen as high as 10 million ohms. That has to do with a lot of things, but first of all, your body is not a good conductor of electricity, right? Skin is, is not typically used uh, in an automobile to conduct electricity. They use copper or aluminum, right? Or stainless steel, okay? So your skin, your blood vessels, all that type of thing, your body's not made for conducting electricity like a car, like a piece of copper is. So you're not, you have very high resistance, right very high resistance to electrical flow therefore you have a high ohm rating or ohm reading on your body when you hook it up to the meter so this would vary by now you might say well my gosh why would one student have a 300,000 ohm resistance why would one have a 10 million that is a huge difference right think about hydration what makes your body more or less uh, resistive to electricity flow Possibly if you eat a lot of salt or you drink a lot of water, you're going to be more hydrated and your body has more of an easier path to flow through that through, flow through it with electricity. Okay, that may be one reason why. In fact, there are hydration meters uh, that some athletes use. And one of the ways they, they work is by measuring um, electrical flow through your body with resistance. <clears throat> If you go to Meyer, actually, you can uh, you can measure your hydration level by putting your hands on two stainless steel pads uh, at the blood pressure machine. If you have a Meyer in your area, and uh, that uses this uh, part of it, what he uses is this test. Okay, so hopefully you guys have a good idea now about resistance. You go to my blank screen. Hopefully you have a good idea about resistance and and what it is. Resistance to electrical flow. We've talked about volts. We've talked about amps. So now we're gonna step it up a little bit. We're talking about Ohm's law. Okay, so before I jump into Ohm's law, is named after this gentleman here, George Ohm, lived a long time ago. Um, he basically discovered this relationship between voltage, amperage, and resistance. <clears throat> so, this is Ohm's law in a nutshell here, okay? Really, you could just look at this triangle and that's all you really need to know about Ohm's law as long as you're comfortable with moving things around and doing some, some basic algebra to figure out what value you need to calculate. <clears throat> what this is saying is that voltage equals I, note up here, I is another name for current, also called an amp, okay? Voltage, also called E sometimes, electromotive force or, um, potential energy or energy, okay? 
But what it's saying is voltage equals amps times resistance. And you can just move that equation all around however you like. <clears throat> okay. So using Ohm's law, we can calculate some things. We have a 12 volt battery in a car. We have a three amp resistor here that's burning up a little bit of energy, which by the way, I don't know that we went over this much, but if something's burning up electrical energy, it's doing something, it's doing work. It may be lighting a light bulb, but maybe generating heat. It may be turning a motor, but it's doing something. In this case, these resistors are generating a little tiny bit of heat, okay? Even if you can't see it or feel it. <clears throat> so 12 volt battery, you hook up a three ohm resistor in a circuit. So we wanna find out amps. Yes, I know the answer is right there. Let's use the equation. I, okay, I or is amps, right? Amps equals volts divided by resistance. So we go 12 divided by three, that equals four. Okay. <clears throat> Same thing down here. What find the amps? Well, here's a 12 ohm resistor with a 12 volt battery. Amps equals volts divided by resistance. 12 volts divided by 12 ohms is one amp. Let's do another one. Okay. Six ohms with a 12 volt battery. You need to find resist, you need to find amperage. Amperage equals volts divided by resistance. 12 divided by six is two. Two amps. Okay. I think you guys get the idea. Same type of problem here. Calculate the total resistance and current for the following circuit. Okay, let's back up. Let's just find the resistance first because we can't find the current or the amperage until we find the resistance, right? You can't have more than one unknown in this type of equation. How do we calculate the total resistance? <clears throat> well, not a big deal. You actually, for these, you just add them. 10 plus three plus seven plus two. So let's see, seven plus three is 10, plus another 10 is 20, plus two is 22, okay? 22 ohms. So now we've got volts, now we've got ohms, okay? Now we need to find amperage. So I'm just gonna pull out my calculator here, which you guys can't see. I am doing, remember, we're finding amperage. Amperage equals volts divided by resistance. So I'm going to do 12.6 divided by, stand by, 12.6 divided by, what did we find out the, the ohm rating was or the resistance? Let's see, 22. And I get 0.57. So, the current being used in this resistor right now, the amperage is 0.57 amps. Okay, <clears throat> before we go much further, we need to talk about the difference between series and parallel circuits. Series circuits are gonna be wired in a series for lack of a better term. Parallel, we're gonna have some wires in parallel on the diagram, obviously not in real life, not necessarily parallel. Here's what I think is an easier way to understand this. If you think of water running through the hose, <clears throat> let's say it's going from, again, negative to positive. This is water. Water is made up of a lot of little droplets, right? If you pick one droplet of water out of here and you need to find out if it's a series or parallel circuit, in a series circuit, that water is going to go through every part of the circuit. Okay, that one little drop. So, okay, a little drop down garden hose, a little drop, hits a resistor, a little drops bouncing around in here, hits another resistor, a little drop going through here, hits another resistor, a little drops here. Boom, a little drop gets right back to the other end of the battery. Okay, a little drop of water in here. Let's go from positive to negative. Drop of water here. Oh, which way is it gonna go? Okay, if that drop of water goes through here, bounces around, now it hits this. This is the return path. That's already going back to the battery. That drop of water never made it to these two circuits. Or it may go past that one and it may go in here. 
and then it may go back. That drop of water never made it to these two circuits. Okay, that's a parallel circuit. If, that, if, if there is some part of power or drop of water, if you're looking at it, that is not going to go through every resistor like it is over here, then you're looking at, you're most likely looking at a parallel circuit. Or you are, I should say, looking at a parallel circuit. Okay, calculate total resistance and current for the following circuit. <coughs> Excuse me. I think that's the problem we just did, actually. Yes, it is. Calculate the total resistance and current for the following circuit. Okay, we did that. Ah, okay. Now it's getting fun. Find the total resistance and current for this circuit. Okay. Total resistance, right? We got to find that first. Let's find the resistance first. We're no longer in a series circuit. Note up here in series circuits, you can just add the ohms together. Okay, it's just 10 plus three plus seven plus two. Boom, you have your number. Okay, 22 ohms, done. Not that easy down here. You have to follow an equation. Here you go again. Parallel circuit with resistors. You have to follow this example. Okay, I, in class, I write this out on the board. Um, you can follow along, you can write it out on a piece of paper. All right, don't let all this mess you up. We're just gonna break it down step by step. Again, parallel circuits, right? Parallel circuits. Total resistance. Here we go, calculating total resistance because we gotta find that first. Here's the equation you use. One over the total resistance or the inverse <coughs> of total resistance equals one over, boom, your first resistor. One over, plus one over, boom, your second resistor. Plus one over, boom, your third. Plus one over, boom, your sixth. Okay, there's how you're gonna find your answer. You've gotta use this equation every time for finding parallel circuit resistance. One over, the total resistance, okay? The rest of it's just algebra, okay? If you hate algebra, then you're gonna have a little bit of difficulty here, but just follow along. You can use a calculator. Use a calculator, type in one over, one divided by eight, you're gonna get that. Use a calculator, type in uh, one divided by eight, one divided by 12, you're gonna get that. Type in one divided by six, you're gonna get that, okay? There you go. Now your fractions are gone. You've got decimals. That's easier for some people. You add all those together, you can use a calculator and you get one half. Boom, but we still haven't touched this side, okay? Now, we need to figure out what RT equals, what total resistance equals. But total resistance, our RT is on the bottom. We need that on the top. So we're gonna flip it to the top. But remember, we gotta be fair in algebra and whatever we flip, to the other side, whatever we flip on top on this side of the, of the uh, equation, we have to flip on this side. So right now this is 0 0.500 over one, but it's gonna be one over 0 0.5000 when we flip this side. So we flip this, so R, RT over one, right? Over one equals one over this, one over 0.5. If you take your calculator and you go one divided by 0.5, you're going to get two. So the total resistance of this circuit is two ohms. Then knowing that, you can calculate amps in the same way we've been doing it. <clears throat> Just when you thought it couldn't get any worse. Okay. The reality of this is it's not that bad. All we're gonna do is we're gonna ignore this. I want you to ignore R3 right now. Pretend this is not even here. What does that do? That turns this problem into the same exact type of problem as this was. If you pretend this is gone, this becomes just a, just a parallel resistance circuit problem. Just focus on these two. Figure out what those are going to equal. Okay, those are going to equal 1.2 ohms. There's the math. 
same way we just did it. Now you can think of these as just one resistor of 1 1.2 ohms in a series circuit. And then you just add it onto this guy. So it's just six plus whatever you got for this. Six plus 1.2 ohms, 7.2 ohms is your total resistance for this circuit, okay? Don't let it mess you up. Break it down, cover one area first, ignore the rest, it's okay. If you were here in class, I'd say, now it's your turn, okay? And then I would come around and help you out and, and cover any questions. All right, I hope you enjoyed the presentation on Ohm's law and electrical resistances and circuits and volts and amps and ohms. Uh, there's a lot to take in there, I know. But uh, again, you can always rewind the presentation, go back, rewatch certain parts. But uh, especially when it gets to the calculation at the end, don't let it mess you up. Just take it one, one step at a time, break it down, follow the formulas, okay? Let me go back here. Just follow these formulas, okay? This is your best friend right here. If you're in class, you will receive a cheat sheet from me that you can use on the test. And I will give you, uh, I'll give you those whenever the next time I see you. All right. Have a good night.